This week on the Computer Chronicles, video telephony on the Internet. We'll show you the hottest thing in online chat, powwow, which lets you talk, not just type. We'll see how you can go to school online using video telephony. We'll meet Stephanie, who uses Internet video to live her life online with a live webcam. And if you're a bit of an exhibitionist, we'll show you how to set up your own webcam. Then we'll demo some new video telephony software that guarantees no lost packets. Plus, my pick of the week, an incredible collection of software applications for the road. It's all coming up next on The Computer Chronicles. The Computer Chronicles is brought to you by BigStar.com with thousands of videos and DVDs for the whole family. Additional support by TechWeb for up-to-the-minute technology news. And by TVA, Television Associates, bridging the worlds of computers and video with DVD authoring and MPEG encoding services. Hi, and welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffee. Well, it's kind of ironic. The phone system started out carrying voice messages. Then we sort of hijacked the telephone system to use it for sending data on networks and the Internet in particular. Now we're going back to shoving voice signals on the phone lines only in a more clever way so as to avoid long distance charges. And we are even moving video over ordinary phone lines now. But let's start with the audio part of Internet telephony. And Richard, I want you to show us powwow, which actually brings chat to a new level in which you can talk to people, not just type to people. But let's go back one more step. Uh, give us the basic chat environment uh, as you would do it in Palo Alto. Uh, thank you, Stuart. Uh, uh, Palo Alto is all about communications on all levels. Uh, and by the way, it's a free product with 3 million it's a people free using download. It. Free download. 3 all million right, people so using th it. This is sort of the text version that, of Palo Alto. That's, that's correct. On the left-hand side here, you see what we'll call a traditional chat yeah, room. Yeah, sort of AOL-type chat room where people are talking that's, to that's each other correct. through the keyboard. What's on the right? On the right-hand right side, you see a list of the members of that particular community. At this particular point, there are 57 members there. This is an instant buddy list. This is a group of people, all of whom are available to chat with. All right, now one thing that's cool about Powwow is if I don't know who a person is, I can actually click and see a picture of them and see their profile almost in real time, right? So I know who I'm dealing with. That's correct. On a voluntary basis, people can enter information about themselves. Okay. Uh, I've picked one here, uh, Princess A, all and right. I'm pulling up her personal profile. Uh, Virginia Beach, 23, happens to be a woman. Actually a woman, comments. Princess A. That's exactly correct. And we can see what she looks like? That's right. And uh, I've already uh, downloaded her picture, and here it is. Which there we, we go. Real time. So who she is, where she's from, that makes it a little more real experience and not knowing who it's you're talking to. It's a level of intimacy that right. goes beyond just text. Now, let's go beyond just text with I want to talk to somebody online. Now, you have uh, somebody up there named Sherry online, right? That's correct. And you can actually have a voice conversation with her, not just type to her. That's correct. Do it. Uh, <laughs> Here I go. Okay. Um, all I do is right mouse click on Sherry's name. Uh -huh. um, I establish a real time connection. That's machine to machine, no server. I've okay. done that. Uh, I'm just going to let Sherry know that I'm here. Okay, so you, you can sort of type to each other now on the sort of typical one on one. We can, we can type at the same time that we're going to do voice. Okay. And she's responded. She happens to be there. I'm going to click on the voice icon for a phone and we're going to go to voice. It's go as ahead. simple as that. Now, this is voice over standard phone line. Um, it's part of the product and used extensively overseas. Hi, Sherry, it's Richard. Uh, we're doing the show. Good morning, Richard. And I assume everything is just going fine for you. How are you? Where, uh, where is Sherry right now? Sherry's in her office. Okay. How's the show going? <laughs> it's going great. Is it going fine? All right, so what are we seeing on the screen right now? Yes, You're actually seeing a kind of here. view meter that, of your voice level and her voice level? That's, that's correct. When, when, when my voice goes... Off. When my voice goes to green, it shows that I'm actually transmitting. You. All right. Sherry, we're talking right now, so <laughs> we got a show to do here. Yeah, we're using, mul we're using multiple microphones. Sherry, Good. thank you very much. Glad to hear that. All right. Now, so that was live conversation. Again, it doesn't matter where she was in the country, right? That's Just machine-to-machine. Machine. Now, the other thing you can do with regard to voice, you can actually do text-to-speech on here, so you can actually listen to everybody in the chat room. Right. It's very effective. And all I, to do that, all I do is go back to my chat room, which uh -huh. is where I am here, and I turn on... Uh, turn on sound. Huh. And now as soon as someone types something in the chat window, okay. uh, we'll hear so them over the speakers. Someone please type something someone in the chat room. Type, there we go. And we're going to do the typical sort of text-to-speech conversion that you know we've heard in other applications. Anyone in. learning to fly a plane in here? That's correct. Yeah. The voice synthesizer is part of the product. You can pick a male or female voice. Uh -huh. It's a wonderful way to 
to scan what's going on because you can set it on individually. Yeah. Instant In a business setting, if your boss is part of the room, you only care about your boss, yeah. put no, him on sound. That's the only one you want to hear. That's the only one you want to hear. All right, so it's yes. Power 3.7, a free download, yes, and the website is? is www.tribal.com. Well, the Internet can also be used to move video signals, moving pictures. And one of the more interesting applications of Internet video telephony is in the area of education and distance learning. And, Gary, that's what you guys are doing with mm -hmm. your ClassPoint software. Yes, sir. And, in fact, is you're the CUCME guys, right? Yeah, White Pine uh, is the developers of CUCME, the granddaddy of all Internet video conferences. Right. Now, what do we do with ClassPoint? What's the next stage? Okay, well, ClassPoint basically maps an instructor-led environment. It's about the relationships between students and instructors, asking questions, giving quizzes, controlling who has the mic and a speaker. So we can have sound, we can have pictures, mm. we can have shared whiteboard? Shared whiteboard, application sharing, a web All right, tour. Now we're up on a modem connection right now, so they're the limits of the real-world telephone exactly. connection. We're 336 or mm. something here. Uh, now, who are we looking at right there? Okay, well, we have Janet Gilbert. She runs a school called the Potter School. She teaches and, and taught last year 40 homeschool students. Well. She teaches them high school math. All right, Janet, can you hear me? Where are you, Janet, and how's this working for you? Well, we got a thumb up anyhow. <laughs> can you talk yeah. to us? Connecticut. So, Janet, tell us a little bit I'm about. I'm in Connecticut, offering uh, math courses to homeschoolers around the United States. Uh, we're a little little break up there, and again, we're we're vulnerable to hear whatever the internet traffic yeah, happens exactly, to be. I guess. Exactly. Let me ask you actually switch over to land okay, mode, sure. which is another way to use this, and we'll get a lot better okay. quality to demonstrate what you okay, can do great. with class one. All right, now now what are we looking at? What's this connection right okay. now? Okay. Well, right now we're running on a, a local area network. It's just a 10 base T network. Okay. This could be a cable modem or ADSL, those types okay. of speeds. Okay. So th so if we had the high bandwidth, this is exactly. what we would be now, able to the, do. The key thing is this is all software, and uh, Peter Neronia is in the other room right now, okay. but it's over a LAN. And Peter, why don't you say hi to us and give us some movement. This shows you the kind of frame rate you can really get in software-based systems. Yeah, looking pretty good. So go ahead, Peter, wave and uh, give us some audio. Hello, Gary. Hello, Stuart. All right. Now, you can have actually more than two people on this, right? Uh, that's very important. This is a server-based system, and there is truly multi-point. So Bruce is also in the room, and I can grant Bruce the spotlight. And now you see Bruce in the other room as well, and his mic is enabled. And we can actually have up to 12 video windows being shown. Okay, so you're sort of the teacher, is that the sort of scenario yes. we have here? And you've got a bunch of students, so exactly. right now we have two of them online. Exactly. Now, what can you do now besides just looking at each other and talking to each other? Well, the video and audio is just the beginning. In fact, right. you don't even have to use it. What I can do is a web tour. And what happens in a web tour is I, as the instructor, control a web browser. And here I've just um, save some PowerPoint slides, okay. and I can actually control the materials, whether it's a streaming video, a cyber exam test, or a PowerPoint presentation, or even bringing students to Yahoo to search for things. I control their right, so In other words, instead of standing in front of the blackboard in front mm -hmm. of class with chalk, you can actually mm -hmm. use a web browser and say, here's mm -hmm. what I want to show you. Look at this. Look at that. Exactly. Can you show us an example? Uh, well, absolutely. Right now, I'm controlling the student's web browser uh -huh. as I go through these materials. And I can bring, for example, here's the, uh, uh, some documentation that was online, mm -hmm. and I bring this to different students. All right, now what about two-way interaction? If you teach, you want to know if they got it, and you want to say, okay, I want to give you a snap quiz. Can exactly. you do something like that? Exactly. One of the other interactions is a quiz, and what I've got now is a quiz here online that I'm actually asking my students, what is the value of pi? And in real time, you've only got two students in the class, okay. but I can have up to 25. So they're seeing the same screen, and you're seeing their, their, their I'm, answers. I'm seeing their answers, but they're not seeing each other's answers. So okay. I, as an instructor, can judge what I have to cover next. So you know whether you got the point across or whether you've got to review the material exactly. again and so on. Exactly. Now you had mentioned the, the web tour is a way to give materials. We right. also have the whiteboard. We actually integrate Microsoft's net meeting into the product in an instructor controlled uh -huh. fashion. So the whiteboard is shared and we do have application sharing controlled by the instructor in the environment. All right. Now again, let's go back to Jan and how she's really using this. She is a homeschooler who's teaching uh, but she's pretty good at something, so mm -hmm. she's able to share her teaching with other homeschoolers wherever they are in the country. Actually, she's got a small business, and she delivers high school math courses to oh. other families all around the country who sign up, and she gives classes three days a week to 40 students. Using the web and class points software. Exactly. That's very exactly. cool. Gary, thank you very much. All right, well, one of the most popular uses of video on the net is the live webcam. By now, we've all heard of Jenny Cam and Anna Cam and all those webcams that allow us to look in on someone else's life. Well, here's a close-up look at what it's like to run a webcam and live your life online. My name is Stephanie. I go by Steph Online. Um, that's S-T-E-F. Stephanie cooks lunch. Stephanie reads a book. Stephanie works at her computer. They are all part of StephCam, a website with a window on the world of Stephanie, where the details of daily existence are webcast around the globe. As far as what I like to do, um, an awful lot of my time is spent simply working at my desk. 
Um, I've done freelance programming. I'm a grad student in sciences. Um, I've done contract music, um, composition for commercials and video games and things like that. So that is the, where I spend the bulk of my time. I've also done little shows. I'll dance around in a towel, all quite, all quite clean and G-rated, but just something fun and goofy to entertain people. I've lifted weights um, in the bathtub. Steph Cam is part slice of life and part performance. With her wireless camera, Stephanie can move from room to room carrying her electronic eye with her. While she ignores the camera most of the time, she is aware of its presence. Stephanie says her site is G-rated, and even her towel dance is quite modest, but her viewers watch for very different reasons. Somebody said, I, I hope you become a pay cam because I'd love to watch you, more updates, just watch you work, just watch the expressions on your face change, which really, which was amazing to me. And then some people say, I, I watch you because you dance around in a towel. Um, some people say, I never look at your cam, but I like to listen to your music. So there, everybody seems to get something a little bit different out of it. Stephanie is now accustomed to having the camera follow her, even if she sets the scene, but there are times when she forgets. Very, very early on, I, um, I was lucky in that I was changing to, into my pajamas and uh, I did not get shot, but it was a near thing. While Stephanie's webcam might be considered a treat for voyeurs, she is clear about who is in control. She is the director, producer, and editor of her on-screen life. This is an issue that um, I was discussing with somebody online. They at first um, seemed to think that they had the power because they could tune in and watch me, but then they realized that because I have control over where the cam sits, what I choose to show, um, when I choose to show it, that I'm really the one with the power in the relationship. Steph Cam gets an average of 4,000 visitors per day. She gets mail from as far away as Australia. But watching Stephanie on camera, whether cooking, or sleeping, or lifting weights, could just be the means to something else. There's, uh, there's certainly some ulterior <laughs> motives. I mean, um, I've done some contract music, as I, I think I said before. I've been a composer. I'd love to get more uh, freelance work. Um, I've done work as a programmer, same thing there. I worked as a, uh, a musician for a video game that uh, perhaps will uh, be able to promote a little bit. Um, I'm not, I guess I'm not high pressure about it on the site because it, the main thing is that I'm having fun, but there's a, there are always several reasons to do that. Well, that was pretty cool. Steph Cam, are you thinking about what it would be like to set up your own live webcam? Let's find out how you do it. David Sims joins us, your tech tools editor with CMP Media. And uh, if I want to start my webcam and have StuCam, I mean, what does it take to do this? It's actually pretty easy, and it's not particularly expensive. If you wanted to get started, you could get into this for under $100. Really? I need a camera, I assume. You need a camera, and everybody's selling cameras now, Kodak, Intel, but they've been selling them for a couple years, so there's a second generation All right, now. now what you have the, the really old Connectix Quick Cam here. I got this at a garage sale last weekend for $10. Bucks. $10. So your, and it came with the software for it. All so right. So for $10, I take it home. I connect into the serial port here right. to get power, and the printer port takes the input from the camera and puts it into the computer. Okay. There's an installation wizard that runs with this, so you're up and running in five minutes. And in five minutes, this is what you have on your screen. All right, so it's, it's monochrome, but what the heck, we're starting. It's black and white. This is last generation, so if somebody's okay. getting started or they want to experiment with it, this is it. At this point, I have a digital camera. So we've got video. I can take a picture, a still picture of you okay. that, that then can be put up on a website, or I can take a movie, which we can make as an AVI, and you can put that on screen. All right, so I have the hardware and I have the quick cam software. Now, what does it take now to put this stuff out there on the web? What do I do next? Right. For that, it's actually a different piece of software, but um, you showed earlier White Pine CUC. Right. That's the granddaddy. There's others out there right now. I've been experimenting with something called NetSnap. So I can go out on the web and just download NetSnap? Yeah, you can get this at FileMine or any of the shareware sites. Mm -hmm. And um, What's it it's cost me? $65 for this one. White Pine's uh, CUC me is $69. And what you We're get still under your 100 bucks altogether? Yeah, exactly. Right. What this gives you is the option to um, 
actually schedule when it's going to right, so go. Let's go just one at a time. Now, when you say schedule, what does that mean? Well, it means at a certain point of time, whatever you dictate, I have dictated once a day at 9 a.m. This is going to snap okay. a picture of so whatever it's looking clear, at. So make clear, webcams are not really live 30 frames a second video. It's, it's a mm -hmm. shot every now and then. There's two applications, actually. You could do this as a webcam. Right. Or you could be using this to do the real streaming application. Even that isn't quite real time, like right. television, which right, is 15. Right frames every second. This is going to be three or four or less frames okay, per second. But most webcams are going to be, you know, take a shot every 10 seconds, one minute, whatever it exactly. is. Exactly. And there's a lot of these out on the web. For instance, this is the view out my window in my office in San Francisco. This is the new ballpark under construction in San Francisco. So this is the ballpark giant. cam? Ballpark cam, updated every minute. And uh, these things are real popular. If you go to Yahoo and type in right. webcam, you're going to be able to see views from Windows out all over the world. Some slow weekend days, this is one of our most popular sites. All right, go back to the NetSnap software a second and just show mm -hmm. what some of the options are, what it takes to all set this up and actually get this out there on the web. Sure. So um, go, get, go through those tabs. You have, you have basic um, settings of how, how often you're going to grab video and what quality video it's going to be. Okay, and so you can decide how good the video is going to be and obviously that's going to affect your, your speed. Right, your how much you're going to be able to transmit. And again, this is still an older um, black and white camera we're working with, so that's okay. going to affect the quality too. Um, you can actually try and set the de delay between frames there and mm -hmm. that's depending on your bandwidth. And again, you can schedule how, if you're, if you're not doing real time, sure. if you're just having a picture, you can schedule how often that happens. Now, suppose I really want to do this faster and have a higher frame, a better quality, I need more bandwidth, then what do I do? Yeah, you can get a lot for a little, but you get what you pay for. <laughs> so right. for $250, you could get a state-of-the-art color camera, okay. and you could get uh, white pine or a more advanced software. For $250, you could really do this right. And if you really had more money to spend than that, you get a better connection. Yeah, that's ISDN, at the bandwidth. Okay, so I really have to get to an ISDN or, or... If you're doing teleconferencing and yeah. it's important for you to really have a virtual presence, that's the way to go. But you can play around, have fun, and it's not a lot of money. Yeah, for $100, <laughs> you're online. David, there you thank are. you. Thanks, All right. Stuart. Well, one of the problems with video telephony on the Internet is lost packets. That means intermittent audio, choppy video. There is apparently a solution to this problem. And, Bob, uh, you guys at ClearPhone claim you have come up with it. What is it? Yes, I think we have a solution. We have a product that no longer loses packets. Yeah. It actually has 100% uh, complete packet updates. So, for instance, if you're sending and talking to somebody online, you don't have to worry about lost packets anymore. You will get 100% of what they say. Well, what's the secret? I mean, why can you well, do this? The secret is can. in the protocol. All the other phones are using a protocol that loses packets. It's called UDP. Right. ClearPhone uses TCP IP. It's just like a file transfer. Hmm. When you transfer a file, you wouldn't want to have any of those bits missing. So it's not going to finish it until it knows it's got exactly. it all. Exactly. And that's what you're doing with audio and video. 100% guaranteed. All right, so let's take a look at a demonstration now. You've got ClearPhone up here, and we've got obviously that one little quick cam on you. You've got another camera connected to another guy, one of your colleagues somewhere right. else. Can we We can call, call him Ryan up? and uh, see if he'll answer and uh, give us a demonstration. All right, here. so you are literally dialing him up then. I'm dialing Brian. Hello there. Okay, and uh, he's just answered. Now, well, let's turn on his video here. Oh, there he is. There he is. Hi, Brian. Uh, how are you receiving me? Oh, just fine. Okay, uh, that's good. And uh, you can see Brian is uh, moving. Uh, yeah, wave your hands, Brian, so we can get a sense of, uh, of how this works. Okay. Hi there. Okay. And uh, ClearPhone is capable of doing up to 30 frames per second. So uh -huh. if you've got the bandwidth, we've got the program. <laughs> all right, so I take it to what you may have to wait for all those packets to get there. So it might be slower, but the quality is there is what you're exactly. saying. Exactly. ClearPhone is the only phone that never gives up quality. It's 100% guaranteed. What goes into your microphone is what comes out the other end. Now, what? Now you can do other things with the video. I, I take it with ClearPhone. I can like attach these things to an email message or other things like that. Yes, ClearPhone has built in its own video recorder, its own audio recorder, capable of sending mm -hmm. attachments as email. In addition, ClearPhone works very well with your browser, Netscape, Internet Explorer. For instance, just by clicking here, it'll launch your browser. It'll bring up all the people that are logged online in the browser. You'll be able to see their pictures like a built-in webcam. Mm -hmm. It's a little slower than some webcams, but it's, it's, it's got a webcam as well. So you get both functions. Clear so what are we seeing here? Uh, right now, we're looking at Netscape uh, or Internet Explorer. We're actually looking at 
who's logged on. These and, are all the people that are right now online with audio video on Clearphone? Uh, yes, and this particular oh. pub. Now, Clearphone has many pubs. Yeah. And this particular one is a generic pub that people tend to log on to. But there are private pubs, there are corporate pubs, hmm. there's places to go with security. Now, one other thing that is really cool, you can actually use Clearphone to kind of remote view your television set at home, even if you're not there. Yes, we Show can. Show me that. Yes, Clearphone can actually call up uh, a remote broadcast. It has built-in streaming. So what we're going to do is call up another connection here while we're actually talking to Brian. His video is over here. The second connection is actually being made right now. So you're calling your house in L.A. somewhere. I'm actually calling and up saying, LA. what's on my TV? And you can see the right TV now. picture in Marathon, Florida, popping up right there. The traffic for close to 24 hours now. Authorities So you're watching a local North L.A. North station right now. You're up here in the Bay Area, and you're transmitting that television you bet. through Clearphone. That's CBS Channel 2 in Los <laughs> Angeles, coming through at 288, slow speed concerned. modem, if somebody with high quality road, audio. Uh, and have to pull off. All right, and now we're on a Mac right now. This is also on Windows, or it's, you're putting it yes, on Windows. Yes, in, in the next month or so, by at the end of October, early okay. November, we plan on releasing our Windows version. Going to be quality, work about the same exactly both platforms. Exactly the same. Both use the fantastic QuickTime 3, Apple's okay. most advanced QuickTime. Gotcha. Bob, thank you very much. Thank you. Steve. All right, that's our look at video telephony on the net. I'll be back in just a minute with my pick of the week. Customizing your start menu is a great idea. Unfortunately, in Windows 95, it's way too hard. It's a lot easier in Windows 98 because it's all done with the drag and drop. Let me show you how it's done. I'm going to click on the Start button here and just go to the Programs item and select Microsoft Word. Now I'm going to just drag and drop with the left mouse button and drag it up to the top of the Start menu. Now when I click on the Start button, Word is always going to be there. I can rearrange all these items as well. I'm going to drag and drop Microsoft Excel here to the bottom, and I'll maybe bring the MS-DOS prompt to the bottom as well. I can do anything I like. I can also drag and drop to the desktop. Here's Excel going to the desktop, and now that's a real shortcut. And of course, it works both ways. I can put Microsoft Outlook right there on the Start menu, up here with Microsoft Word. And here's a really neat trick. You can drag and drop to the taskbar. It creates a miniaturized icon that you can click on in the future to launch the application that's there. Those are just a few of the ways that you can customize easily the Start menu in Windows 98. Now, you should note that this is also something you can do in Internet Explorer 4.0, which is freely downloadable from the Microsoft site. Back to you, Stuart. Now for my pick of the week. There are almost two million of these Palm Pilots in use around the world right now. We've all discovered this is a pretty darn convenient little device. But one of the best things about a Palm Pilot is the ton of third-party software that's out there that lets you use your Pilot for business, education, games, all kinds of things. The only problem with all that Pilot software is you have to go searching for it on the web and then take the time to download it. That is not a problem anymore. A little company called Pilot Island has just come out with Pilot Goodies. It's a CD-ROM containing nearly 300 Palm Pilot applications. This is a terrific collection. The interface is friendly. You can choose from educational applications, utilities, communications, travel, business, graphics, games, and more. It's a nifty little package chock full of useful and fun stuff to make your Pilot even more enjoyable. And the price is only about $35. That's it for this edition of The Chronicles. We'll be back here again next week with more of the latest on hardware, software, and the Internet. Thanks for joining us. I hope we'll see you here next time. The Computer Chronicles is brought to you by BigStar.com with thousands of videos and DVDs for the whole family. Additional support by TechWeb for up-to-the-minute technology news. And by TVA, Television Associates, bridging the worlds of computers and video with DVD authoring and MPEG encoding services. To purchase a videotape copy of today's program, call toll-free 1-888-310-7850. Please specify the show number and the topic. 
Next week on the Computer Chronicles Web Radio, we'll give you a guided tour of the many radio stations you can listen to on the web. We'll show you Spinner.com, a meta web radio station where you can choose from hundreds of different formats. Davey D is a real world radio disc jockey who uses the web to keep in touch with his fans. Imagine Radio is a website that lets you create your own customized radio station. And we'll meet the host of one of the most popular web radio programs, Geek Radio's David Lawrence. It's all coming up next week on the Computer Chronicles.